Make the seats creak. In some ways, we had accomplished what we had hoped. You know, there was this building built, there was a lot of people that showed up. From an appearance standpoint, it felt like Port City is really successful. But what was going on more deeply inside is like, are we really making a difference in our community? Are we really making a difference inside of people's lives? A lot of it, you know, came to a head in Hurricane Florence. It had really gotten to a place where I just felt like, you know, we, we needed to be for, and we didn't have language for this thing. We, I think our, our vision statement was written fully in 2018. It was Life with God Together for the World. And it was to really start to hone a vision of what, what, is, to be, what is it to be, to be for the world. And it's not about building our church bigger. It's not about those things. It had to be about turning our church out. One of the critical moments for me that happened in the life of our church was Hurricane Florence in 2018. We'd been struggling with, again, managing the size of what had happened with the church over the years. And so where we found ourselves is, does, a, does the size of this church really matter? Is this too much? Um, are we actually even making a difference? Can we even make a difference? What happened um, when that hurricane made landfall, we were set up with one disaster organization who wasn't able to make it in originally when landfall was made. And I remember I was walking in that back hall and I'm just thinking, I, felt, it, I remember thinking, we're, we're, we're alone, we're, we're, the, we're, we're gonna be here, and I don't even know if we have a church we can mobilize. Like, I don't even know what we have, because we're just, we're big, but I, we don't have any systems or organization to be able to really mobilize people towards something. But there was another organization that somehow randomly got my phone number and called me in the middle of the hurricane and said, hey, we're about 12 miles out we think you guys would be a good place for us to set up. Are you willing? And I called Mike. Mike was actually here in the building. And I told him, I said, look, I just got a call from an organization named Convoy of Hope and they want to help. And I said, yes. And so they showed up and we set up in the back parking lot in the middle of the hurricane. And that was probably one of the most powerful moments for our church because they helped us stand up as a church. They helped us be a church to our community. They showed up with just a large amount of resources that helped us help the community. Our church literally turned outward in 12 hours. And for those who were here during those days, they remember the trucks, and they remember the number of people who were just coming through here, the linemen being here, I mean, all the things that happened. And I remember just going, God answered this prayer in 12 hours. I got, my prayer was like, Lord, could you turn us outward? Could you give us a vision for, for, for the world? And our church turned outward in, in 12 hours. The church just gathered, I mean, just out of the woodwork, um, you know, with support of, you know, here in our building, because we ran lots of different ministries, Convoy and Samaritan's Purse, and I can remember them in every corner of this building parking lot became that beacon of light, uh, you know, of hope for this whole community. And I felt like in that time, it gathered the church in a way that had not gathered before. You know, those days we had been talking about things like, you know, some of the questions I was asking in my own crisis was, um, why does it matter that we have 6,000 people versus 10,000 people versus 5,000 people? Like, why does that, why does that metric matter? What if it's about the way people are personally connected and, and embrace the ministry and the calling of what it is to be a church? Convoy and, and Florence gave us a vision of what that would be like. So in, in 19, we started kind of asking, what if, we, what if attendance wasn't the metric? Then you have the pandemic and you literally go to zero in attendance. 